Okay, so hi everyone. Um, uh, nobody's here yet, or here. Uh, I didn't really expect anybody to show up. This is pretty last minute, so I'm going to go ahead and record um, me talking through some stuff about MLA, and then I'll go ahead and send this out. And um, please uh, let me know if this helps you, or email me if you have any other questions. Um, but with, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start with some MLA stuff. Um, I'm going to share my screen first and foremost. So there we go. So um, one thing everybody should have gotten in that first initial email is the MLA handout from the Writing Center. I sent the PDF. It is 31 pages long, but that's because it's pretty all-encompassing. Don't let that intimidate you um, because this is really, really helpful. So um, we're going to go ahead and look at the quick formatting guide, and then I will hop into Word with a paper of my own from when I was in my undergrad. And um, I'll go through and show you guys how to do some stuff. So. So for the quick formatting guide, it's going to tell you um, some stuff here. So like you're going to want to use one inch margins, uh, use Times New Roman, uh, 12 point font needs to be double spaced. There should be no space between your paragraphs. Um, you always indent your first line in your paragraph. That's another one. And you should have uh, your last name with a page number. You should always have a title um, and here is how you do your like your header um, and the day is always in the day month year format in MLA so that's important to know um, other other things to know would be how to set up a works cited page, which a couple of you I've noticed do have some works cited. Um, you generally don't need a works cited page unless you're citing something in your work. However, if the professor has asked you to do works cited um, for your specific thing, then go ahead. And for that, um, I would suggest looking further into the packet. And I will also uh, email you all a link to a very, very handy website called The Owl at Purdue. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that up right now as well. So um, I'm on Microsoft Edge right now because that's just uh, what my computer pulls up when I open up PDFs. But uh, here we go, Owl Purdue. So The Owl at Purdue is their online writing lab. That's where, that's where we want to go. And then from there, we want to go to the MLA guide for this specific thing. Um, if you have other classes, uh, either right now or later down the line, and you need help on a quick thing on how to cite APA or any other format, this will have some quick how-to as well. Um, they also have a few things that go a bit in depth. If for your particular major, you find that you have to use one of these more than the other, I would highly, highly, highly recommend investing in the handbook. Um, when I was an undergrad, my husband got the MLA handbook for the edition that we were on when we were in school. And I used that all the time because that was what I needed for my major. And it was without a doubt, one of the best investments in my academic career. So anyway, back on track, MLA, here we go. So you can see here that uh, they have quite a bit of information that you can look up. Oh, we don't want that. Um, so like you can see more about general formatting, style guides, citations. Um, let's see, we'll go to, let's do, um, let's look at a quick sample works cited page. 
um, since we were just talking about Works Cited. And it'll show you what this looks like. And how you would do certain things and such. Um, I will say this real quick though. Don't use citation machines. Citation machines um, are not guaranteed to work the way your professor wants them to be. And citation machines are not always the best simply because you are relying on something else to do this for you rather than learning to do it yourself. So what I would do is I would just um, look up how to do those citations yourself and learn how to do them rather than use a citation machine. Okay, now moving on to the next part. Um, I'm going to show you all one of my old papers. I just pulled up the rough draft, so there's plenty of things that needed to be uh, changed. So first things first, I want to make sure everything is in a 12 point Times New Roman font with a uh, that is double spaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to on my keyboard instead of instead of doing this whole thing because that's going to take forever. If you don't already know the shortcut, um, then you're going to learn something new today. But if you do, cool. Press the control button and then press A at the same time. So control A. That selects everything. Now what you're going to want to do is make sure, okay, I got my Times New Roman 12 point font, cool. I have double spaced. Now I'm going to click this little thing right here to go to paragraph settings. I'm going to see here, okay, okay. There is no space between my paragraphs. You can tell because if it's auto, you can see this little default window right here will have a small space, but if you, zero, auto, and such, so you can see that. You want zero, okay. Next, um, now that we know that our text is correct, let's go in and change the layout to make sure the margins are correct. In MLA, your margin should be one inch all the way across. So that would be this. It's one, 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 one. You can see right there, normal. Okay. Now, another thing for MLA to know is, um, you may notice that on my Microsoft Word, I have something here called MLA for my text um, and such. That is because I made this custom. It does not really come with that. So just note, you're probably working with normal, which means if you're working with normal, everything's gonna be in uh, cal Calibri. Yeah, okay. So um, now the next thing to do would be to make sure that all of my paragraphs Start with an indent, okay? One tab in, cool. Okay, and then after that, one of, one of the last things I always do is I put a page number up. Um, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. You can see where my mouse is in this header space, this is uh, where the, this, this is kind of confusing, but this is um, in terms of a paper layout um, and formatting speak, this is your header, whereas down here, this is your footer, but in, in um, paper formatting, such as like MLA, APA, stuff like this, this is called your header as well. So for this, we're going to come up to your margin space, double click, so now we're in the header space. Go up here to page number, top of page, go down to plain number one, or 
three, excuse me, plane number three, type in your last name and a space. And then you're going to want to highlight the whole thing. Come here. Make sure this is in a Times New Roman font because it often isn't. It's um, usually just in whatever the base um, default is. So, and then just to get out of this, you can either, uh, there is usually a way to exit out of this up here where you can exit out by clicking um, the X button or you can just double click down here. Um, I usually just do the double click method. So, um, let's see, I believe that covers that part of the question that I saw off a lot for your header, um, the paper header, excuse me, not the margin at header. Um, that your date should always be like this. Uh, you do not need a comma. This is backwards. So it would do that. And you would put your professor, or uh, in this case, he was, uh, this particular professor was a doctor, so you put doctor instead of professor. Um, and then what your class was, or is, what your class is. For me, it was English 324. Um, and yeah, this is um, how this goes. Uh, I'll do a real quick work cited page for you guys, just in case. Um, let's see, so what we're going to do is insert page break right here. Now, like that. we're going to go to home. We're going to go here. We're, we want it centered. Uh, another way to do this is to click, okay, so for left alignment, left justif justification, uh, click your control button and click your E button. These are some shortcuts um, that you can learn. And here we're going to type out works cited. Oh, we are not in the correct font. So now we need to make sure we do that. 12 point font, okay. And this we wanna make sure we are that. And then click this real quick. Oh, see, there's some spacing there again. We want zero spacing. Okay, now for this next part, we're going to do a left justification. Um, and let's see, we are going to cite, um, let's see here, what is something we can cite that I have on hand? Hmm. Let's cite, um, let me pull up um, course documents for here, textbook. I'm going to pull up some of the, one of the readings. Um, Let's see, bicycle muscles and cigarettes. Let's pull up this reading. Okay. So it's bicycle muscles and cigarettes by Raymond Carver. So, in order to do this, I'm going to go like that and that. Let's check here. That's what I want. 
So we're going to scroll down to how to do Here we go, we're excited page. This is what we want. So in order to do this, you're going to need several, uh, several things. Let's see. I'm trying to find where the short story one is. Book a serial author, book a single author. We'll just pretend that this was a book with a single author um, for this short story. So now we'll scroll back down. So here we need the last name, first name of our author. And if we're citing um, bicycles, muscles, cigarettes, then our author is. Raymond, and then we do a period. Size. Um, please note that this would normally be a little bit different um, for a short story, just because generally a short story is in an anthology, but we don't have all of the information about the anthology that this book uh, would be, or if this, you know what exactly the information about this is. So, okay, so now the title is Cycles, comma, Cycles, comma, and then unitalicize. You don't want your um, your punctuation to be italicized with that. Okay, and if you don't know um, information, you generally leave it, um, you generally leave it alone. So, So let's see if I can find, okay, nope, it's not on here. But um, right here is a real quick thing to know. In previous versions of MLA, you didn't need the URL in the entry, but um, or yeah, you, you still don't need to like include the HTTP backslashes in the URL, but it is recommended you use a URL if there is one involved. Um, and there's a couple other things to know that have been changed from the 8th to the 7th edition. And for books, you don't, um, you don't usually need to include the city of publication, but um, as you can see here, there are a couple exceptions. So anyway, um, so I'm going to make up some information about this particular um, example, just because uh, I want to have enough information to um, show you how to make a hanging indent. So um, we will say the publisher was Penguin House Publishing. And uh, it was in And 
and it was published in um, we're gonna say it was published in 2001. I'm not even, I'm not really sure when this was actually published. Um, so that would be our first one. And then for the second, I am going to borrow from our MLA handout here. Okay, so as you can see, this did not do a hanging indent, which is what I wanted uh, for it to not indent. Um, So what I'm going to do in order to make a hanging indent is we're going to highlight that, come up here to paragraph, indentation, under special, we click hanging, and we click OK. Oops, didn't do that right. All of your works cited page should be a hanging indent. So special, hanging, indent, OK. There we go. Now, the other thing you should know about a works cited page is even if this comes first in your essay, it comes second on your works cited page because B comes before C in the alphabet. So you always have your excited page in alphabetical order. Um, I hope all of this has been helpful. I um, yeah, I hope this has all been helpful. <laughs> uh, I don't have anybody here with me, so I can't tell if you guys have any other questions or anything like that. Um, we're not going to look at the grammar or anything in this. Like I said earlier, this was an extremely rough draft of a paper I wrote for my undergrad. Um, so uh, since graduating, I switched PCs and I don't have access to all the stuff I wrote, so I can't. I'm, I'm not going to show you a whole bunch, but Okay, so hopefully that's all, you know, good and grand and answers questions for you. Um, if you are not sure about something and you just want a quick, like, hey, you know, how do I do this? Um, you can email me um, or you can email the Writing Center. Uh, so. Yeah, hopefully that helps everybody. Uh, like I said, um, if you have any more questions, let me know. If you can't get a hold of me uh, on Monday or it just isn't working or you have something after five, you are always more than welcome to schedule a appointment with any of the other writing center tutors. You don't have to come just to me. Um, if you're finding that my tutoring style isn't helping you, and you want help from somebody else, that's okay too. Uh, you don't have to stick with just me. That being said, I don't want you to feel like you can't come to me because I said that, because you definitely can still come to me. Uh, uh, I hope that was really helpful. Um, and thanks for, thanks for watching. This is my first time recording something like this, so uh, yeah. I'll see you later.